Good morning. I would like to welcome you all to Holy Spirit Catholic Community. It's great to have you with us as we celebrate the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Father Constance, assisted by Deacon Scott. Please leave your donations in the bag or basket on the table as they leave the chapel. Our donations are down. At the live stream masses, we would also encourage those at home to mail in their donations or bring them to the large outdoor mailbox at the office. How to leave the church after mass. The priest and deacon will be exiting to the sacristy after mass to avoid more exposure at this time. Please wait for the ushers to direct you to leave your pew, beginning with the pews at the back to more easily manage safe distancing. The roof on the St. Anthony Chapel needs to be replaced. The cost of replacing the roof is $60,000. We currently have $30,000 raised. Catholic Extension has offered us a matching grant of $15,000. If you are able to help us reach our goal of 15,000, please use one of the matching fund envelopes or on your check in the memo line put roof repair. Today we pray for the birthday of Jessica Gallegos. Oh, 
That for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without paying and without cost, drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully. Listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the theme united, uniting the readings this Sunday is clearly that of the boundless generosity of God. God gives freely, and God gives in ex extravagant measure. In our first reading, we had the prophet Isaiah telling God's people that God alone can give them what they need. We had the, the way he was inviting them to come to the banquet, to come to the ex eschatological banquet, the banquet the Lord has prepared for them. All those who are hungry, all those who are thirsty, all those who are without money, they are all invited to come to the Lord, and the Lord will provide for them. It is in the, it is in the Lord alone that we find true and lasting food to nourish our souls for this journey. So everyone is invited to come to the banquet. And we are here celebrating this Holy Mass. It is the banquet in which everyone is invited to come in. And we normally share the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as the food which sustains us in our spiritual journey, in our lives here on earth. That in the second reading, we are reminded about God's love for us. We heard the way Paul asked the question, what will separate us from the love of Christ? What will separate us from the love of Christ? 
Here Paul refutes the, the opinion of those who say that there are some events or situations in life like trials, sufferings, distress, persecution, which may block God's love from reaching his people. St. Paul reassures the people and each one of us that nothing, and absolute, ab absolutely nothing, can stop God from loving us. Nothing will separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing can block God's love from reaching us. Together with the challenges, could, to, together with the problems, together with the ups and downs here and there in our lives, still that love of Christ, that love of God remains. Not, nothing will be able to separate us from that love of God, from that love of Christ. That's what Paul is assuring us. Even now, the way we are facing uh, the, this COVID-19, which has brought a lot of challenges to us, but the love of Christ remains. That love of Christ remains. So it is time to be more strong in our faith. It is time to allow that love of Christ to work in us. So nothing can be able to separate us from the love of Christ. Nothing can block God's love from reaching each one of us. And of course, we saw also this in our gospel reading. Nothing could prevent Jesus from loving the people, from showing compassion and feeding the crowd. We heard after Jesus hearing bad news about the death of John the Baptist, he decided to go to a, lo uh, to, to a lonely place, to a deserted place, probably to mourn for him. But before even reaching to that place, the lonely place, the place was already crowded, was already crowded with people. And placing the needs of others before himself, and out of his compassion for them, he taught them, he healed those who were sick, and then afterwards, in the evening, he fed them. He gave them food. And at first, the, the apostles or the disciples wanted Jesus to, dis, to dismiss the crowd, to go away, to go, to, buy, uh, to go somewhere to buy food. But Jesus challenged them, the, the disciples, by telling them, feed them with what you have. Give them what you have. And they had, they had only five loaves and two fish. So he told them, feed them with what you have. But the, the disciples doubted a little bit. For the disciples, what they had could not be enough for the people. Could not be enough for the 5,000 people. But for Jesus, it, is, it was more than enough. Here the disciples are portrayed as people of faith, but the faith that is still weak, the weak faith. Jesus will help them to strengthen their faith, will help them to grow in faith by performing this miracle of feeding the people. And of course, this is also our situation uh, sometimes. Sometimes we may feel that our faith is becoming weak. In those, in, in those moments, we need Jesus to intervene. We need Jesus to help us in strengthening our faith. We need him to help us to continue growing in faith. So we need to invite him always to take control of our lives. Then we do, when we do that, everything will be possible for him.
and something else, the readiness of the, of the disciples to contribute the little they have makes it possible for Jesus to bless it and feed the people, makes it possible for the, uh, for, for, for the miracle to happen. Without Jesus, it would have been impossible, but with Jesus, it became possible. The lesson to us here is that when Jesus' compassion and our faith, and of course our collaboration come together, always the impossible can happen. Always the miracle can be performed. It also tells us when we allow Jesus to be at the center of our lives, amazing things can happen. What we consider as not enough becomes enough with the help of Jesus. And of course, what is required from each one of us is also to be generous, to be generous to others, just like the way the apostles were ready to share the little they have, five loaves and two fish. So we are called also to be generous, especially in helping those who are in need. There are a lot of people who are in need of our, of, 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 of our help. They are, what, they are the sick, the, the, the hungry, and the refugees, the homeless, and so on. So we need, we need also to show compassion to them by helping them. And the feeding, the, the feeding of the crowd is a symbol of the Eucharist, the sacrament of unity, the sacrament of love, the sacrament of thanksgiving. And of course, the Eucharist comes from the Eucharistia, which means thanksgiving. So the Eucharist, the sacrament of unity. And that's why we are here today morning, uh, today, today's morning, united with Jesus in love, united with Jesus in whatever we are doing. And it is the sacrament of unity because the way in which Christ, uh, Jesus' actions are described in this uh, miracle, he took the loaves and the fish, looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to distribute, to give to the people. This were the actions of Jesus at the Last Supper, taking, blessing, breaking, and giving. And that is what we normally do always in each celebration of the Mass. We will do it also in this celebration of the Mass. We will take the bread, the wine, then we will bless, then we'll break the bread, and of course, distributing to each one. The blood, the, 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 the blood, the body and the blood of Christ. The Eucharist is the occasion for us to be nourished both by the word of God by, and by the body and blood of Christ. So now, at the first part of the mass, we are fed by the word of God, then when we enter the second part of the Mass, we are fed by the body and the blood of Christ. In general, my dear brothers and sisters, today's readings remind us that God really cares about his people. He really cares for each one of us. And that there is, there is enough and more than enough for everybody when we trust in God when we trust in Jesus. Then, as Christians, we have to commit ourselves to share and to work with God in communicating his compassion to all of us, in communicating his compassion to all. God is a caring father. 
but he wants our cooperation. So we need to cooperate with him. And whatever we offer through Jesus, will have a life living, a life giving effect in those who receive it. And we will receive many blessings on our part. So let us pray today also, we may be able to be generous and we may be able to share what we have. And let us continue asking for God's protection, God's assistance, God's guidance, and especially in this time when we face this COVID-19. Let us always have that faith. Nothing is impossible for God. With God, with Jesus, everything is possible. The only thing is continue to be strong in our faith. And let us ask him to strengthen our faith. Amen.
please be seated as we prepare the gifts. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. May we stand? Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray. And accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranging, arranged and have arranging the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your might works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O oh Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to guide thy people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts you have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when his supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you God, with the blessed just as past, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to come in faith and charity, your perfect church on earth, with, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Peter our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you are gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. O Master Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, 
through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Bless us, we grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of Jesus Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Is I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace with a simple love. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have not heard you, and you should let your own heart root. But always say, whatever is so, so shall be. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold the
Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those who renew with these heavenly gifts, and in, in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May the Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord from our lives. Thanks be to God. Together, let us pray the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the weakness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Strengthened hell, Satan, and all your spirit, round up to the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you, the deacon, for being with us uh, this morning, the choir for singing, of course, those who are helping us in the video, the reader, the ushers, and all of you for coming for this celebration. I wish you a nice weekend. Thank you.